Guard jump's really important. Now, in Ganajin, Yun has a lot of moves, like far medium punch, crouching light kick, far fierce, that are plus 10 or better, which means that your opponent's going to be in block stun for a long time. So normally in situations where they would use this on Okuzeme, where they would try to jump your throw, it's the same concept here, where they're trying to bait you to walk forward to go for a Zempo. So they're inputting block and then jump and then block again during their block stun. Going for a normal pressure, something like this, is going to allow you to get into range for Zempo. So when you're doing this, your opponent's looking to jump away. So this is the exact situation I'm talking about, where you're using your normal pressure and your opponent's trying to get out. The first way that you can deal with it is by adding delays. Now, as you can see here, if your pressure is too strong, or I should say too precise, then you're going to end up with your opponent just blocking forever. But if you add proper delays, and you know that their goal is to try to jump your Zempo, then you're going to make it easier on you to get these confirms because adding delays will allow your opponent to actually go into their jump so you'll hit the first couple frames of their jump animation because jump takes three frames or more for most characters to get off the ground so if your opponent is conditioned to think that you're going to zempo one of the things you can do is to take advantage of their jumps you can let them jump and then punish them for it. Now what do I mean by this? Basically, that you can wait for them to jump and then either do a close standing medium kick, or if you're further away, you can do dash punch, you can, you know, shoulder, whatever it is that you want to do. Right? There's a lot of ways that you can take advantage of this. So, not only can you just add delays so that you can confirm, but you can let them make a decision that's going to kill themselves. And also, adding these sort of delays where you are looking for your opponent to make that jump away um, gives you an indication of how they want to approach defending an agent. Your other choice is to use moves like close standing medium punch, standing light kick, and crouching medium kick as a way to force your opponent into a situation where, in most cases, you are going to be out of throw range after they block, and these moves will allow you to move forward for the Zempo a little sooner. So, if your opponent is committed to hard blocking, you can move faster than if you were to use a crouching light kick, right? just because you're able to walk sooner. But it has a secondary effect, in that because it's less plus, if they are guard jumping to try to get away from the Zempo tension, that you're going to put them in that jump state a lot faster. Because your opponent's going to be trying to guard jump, when you're using these moves, you're less plus. So like standing leg kicks plus 9. So this means that instead of it being plus 13, they're going to jump 4 frames sooner since they come out of block stun 4 frames sooner. So if they're trying to guard jump during your normal pressure strings to avoid the walk up Zempo, um, then it's going to be a little bit easier for you to force them into that jump when using these moves. And then you can catch them with either, you know, a delayed close to any medium kick, or other sort of pressure strings. So then you get stuff like this. Anything after these buttons, if you add a delay, will potentially grab your opponent out of their decision.
Whether it be far medium punch, crouching medium kick, close medium kick, crouching light kick, fierce, far fierce, whatever it is. There's a lot of different things that you can hit your opponent with. And you can even do stuff like this, as degenerate as it may seem, where you can intentionally make it so that they can jump and then go for universal overhead. So if you try to do this and your opponent is blocking and you're at a range where you end up getting pushed just just too far outside of this range for this to work, then while you still may hit them when they jump, if they block, it's going to force them into a proximity guard, which will then give you a Zempo tension for free or will allow you to go for high load with close standing medium punch or far standing medium punch and then obviously your lows are crushing leg kick and crushing medium kick. Concept simple. You guard, you back throw, you block. It's done at the same timing as guard jump because you're still using the plus moves against Yun. So if you go for normal pressure and then you walk forward for the Zempo, you get your ass thrown. Dealing with this is a little bit harder. And the reason for that is because if you delay your button too much during your pressure string when you're trying to get up for that Zempo, you're going to get thrown. So even when you're trying to, you know, bridge the gap, so to speak, to get closer, there's a chance that just you moving forward is going to get you thrown. So if your opponent is guard throwing as opposed to guard jumping, even though it's a little bit more risky from your opponent to do this, because it leaves them open to lows a lot easier, there is some upside for them. So in order to deal with this, you have to use backward movement and then whiff punish the throw attempt, or you have to use delays. movement in spacing in general against opponents that like to throw you like this is very important. So when applying Ganagian pressure, if you walk forward too much, you're going to get thrown, right? So even if you're too far away. So the goal here is to get to a distance where you your opponent knows you have to walk forward so that you can take advantage of this. Micro movements are very important. And putting yourself in a situation where your opponent need, knows that you need to move forward for that pressure to continue, or for that Zempo, is exactly what you need to do to take advantage of them if they like to throw like this. You do a string like uh, that puts you at this spacing, you take that step forward and then that step back, and then you kill them for it. And this is another reason why people like the forward fierce so much. Because you have to walk forward. And if they're just sort of blindly doing stuff like this, and they throw too early, they're not going to throw you out of your follow-ups. And if you delay your next attempt, or your next decision, you can hit them. This is why stuff like crouching medium kick forward fierce is used a lot by some players and why Crouching Medium Kick Kara Fierce is used a lot by some players. Because it allows you to very easily frame trap your opponent into making a decision to try to jump or press a button. And this also applies to, you know, these sort of buttons as well. Oops. where you can eventually sort of work your way forward and make your opponent make decisions. And standing light kick is a perfect opportunity um, to make your opponent try to throw you 
so that you can go for stuff like standing medium kick just outside of range, which blows them up, uh, just like it does guard jump, uh, and all that stuff. So these moves in Ganajin still put you outside of throw range, unless they take that micro step forward. So this is where you can use that backward movement to bait your opponent into making that decision, that thinking that you're going to go for that, you know, walk forward, crouching light kick. And then you can take advantage of it. Delays are really important against players that like to throw like this. And the closer that you are, the easier it is to sort of bait these throws because they think you're going to be walking forward that micro step that you need for that Zempo. When you're blocking against Ganajin, you can mash whatever button you want, and as long as you're in block stun, it won't come out. So as soon as you leave block stun and you can first frame be able to do this, that's when it will happen. When Chun is blocking my Ganajin here, She's mashing down jab. So this means that if I try to walk up for a Zempo, I get hit. Now Chun Li is a special case because her down jab is basically faster than or equal to a throw. But a lot of characters are not going to have this fast of a move. But in almost all cases, all the moves that are going to be done are pretty much low parryable. There's two main ways that you can deal with this. You can use delays or you can parry. So let's talk about parries first. Parries are really important uh, to weave into your pressure, especially when you're adding delays. Knowing that you can add a free parry in some situation is extremely helpful. A majority of the characters are going to be contesting with lows, and the few characters that can contest with highs, you have to make them show you that they're willing to do that. And it's still incredibly risky to do something like that for a move that takes six frames to start up or something, you know, like a Dudley stand roundhouse or something. So while certain buttons are useful, it's a lot more risky to do them. So almost everything that you're going to be seeing or going to be interacting with are going to be lows. And it's going to be characters mostly up close, but some characters are going to want to press buttons the further you are away, like Hugo doing his crouching light kick. But in most situations, you're just going to be adding a little bit of room for your opponent to hang themselves by pressing that button and giving you that parry, and then giving you the standing medium kick or crouching medium kick forward fierce or whatever it is that you want to do. And that's all dependent on range and the character you're playing against, the range at which you're parrying and all that stuff. Because some characters have further reach and pokes than others. When you're dealing with different characters, you have to think about where can their normal hit me and in what situation are they likely to be pressing it. Because Chun-Li is going to be pressing her down jab in different situations then Hugo's would be pressing his down light kick. Hugo's might often try to spin the stick and just, you know, go for SPD instead or something. But if they're trying to interrupt you with something, then you have to know at what ranges you can try to contest them and what is the best way to do so. So an example is with Chun-Li, you can sort of either whiff punish or hit the startup over down jab with either crouching medium kick or far fierce from very specific distances. If you're too close and you're basically just in her face, there's nothing you're going to be able to do, so you have to down pair. However, if you tap back, you can either hit the startup or you can... Um, with punish or down jab. Now, as you can see here, 
the far standing fierce punch ends up getting hit after the back step from the standing light kick. So it's a very spacing dependent thing and what you should be pressing and why. So I would have to back up even more to make the far fierce worthwhile. Right? So you have to go through this sort of thing with every character, knowing where you want to be, where you can delay if players like to press these buttons, and if you need to be parrying during your delay. It's sort of a two-step process. Um, but it's very hard because, you know, certain moves like Forward Fierce don't work against Chun-Li because her down jab is three frames. Whereas Forward Fierce into Forward Fierce into Forward Fierce might technically be a frame trap against a character that has worse buttons that they could be mashing. Now, technically speaking, you can do uh, uh, crouching medium kick forward fierce forever, as long as you're recovery canceling it correctly. But that's a block string. The idea here is that you want to be contesting your opponent with specific things. And in some situations, you can aim to uh, use special moves, but it's a little bit riskier against characters like Chun that have, you know, very specific um, or specifically strong moves. But you can special at the same time after specific things where you know that you're going to be hitting the startup. So like a slight delay after a far fierce. Like this. Or after like a forward fierce or something like that. Where you know exactly what you're able to do. See? So all of this stuff needs to be applied to different characters. There are other characters like Hugo that are really annoying to deal with because it pushes you far away and it's really hard to, you know, get in. Because you you know, you're trying to do forward fierce, doesn't work. You're trying to like walk up and do like crouching medium kick or something, doesn't really work. You have to whiff punish this. So you have to be standing at about this range. And you could use far fierce. You can walk forward or Kara in and go for a uh, crouching medium kick forward first. But it's really difficult to, you know, apply pressure unless you're going for like very specific setups. Because if you delay too much, he can just mash this out and then you're pushed too far away to ever get that Zempo. Getting back in at that point is going to be really difficult and if they just hit you once and then sort of go back into defensive mode it can be a little mind fucky so if you go try to go for like a uh, like a show confirm then it's very possible that you'll get it, but it's also a lot easier to red uh, to parry and then get supered or get SPD'd or something because you're a lot closer. Um, so it's sort of like you have to play the, the risk-reward game a little bit more against you know, um, from far away. But it's very easy here to like... Be outside of SPD range and still bait the uh, the crouching light kick run. So against characters like this, you have to worry about whiff punishing and stuff like that a little bit more. You can't just let him like mash buttons.
when you're playing a character like Ken, and you have high invincible moves, and then low invincible moves, and then you have supers that are also invincible on startup, like, this can make it a little bit hard for a Yuns, as long as the Ken wants to take this risk. It is an extremely large risk, because if Ken screws up, then he dies for it, essentially. But it is a decision that can be made, and it's something that, even at a high level, gets pulled out every once in a while. Like seeing a Dudley doing, you know, corkscrew blow or something during a particular type of string that Yun might do that may leave a little bit of a frame gap. However, if the Yun actually does his pressure strings at the correct timing, it's not going to beat your choices. I did light punch DP, doesn't work. Fierce Punch DP may work, depending on the situation, but as you see here, even if you're successful, since Yun is so far away, doing something like a crouching medium punch, or a medium kick, sorry, unless he's committing to doing, like, Dekai, or Far Stand Heavy Punch, you're not going to end up getting a whole lot out of it. The further he is away, even if you tag him with your Heavy Punch DP, he's going to be so far away that he can just walk up and then do Stand Medium Kick Palm, or walk up and just palm you or whatever he wants to do to get you back to the corner and get his ender. There are ways though that, you know, these characters with good supers can deal with Yun when he's doing these pressure strings that have a tiny little gap. However, if you don't have perfect execution, like you just see there, if you mess up just a little bit by a frame or so, then you're gonna end up getting hit. So you actually have to wait until you're out of block recovery. Before you do it. So this is another risk that Ken can do, because if Yun blocks it, even though you're eating some of Yun's timer, you're gonna end up still getting rather large chunk of damage taken out of your life bar. So Unless Yuns are doing very specific strings that you know are coming, that use something like Crouching Medium Punch, it's a little bit risky to go for this. There are other moves inside of Ganejin, like Dekai, where if Yuns try to abuse it too much, you can just kill them for it with characters like Ken. Either with Super, or you can do the same thing with DP. If you try this against other moves, like let's say the Yun is doing Daipan Loop instead of doing the Kai, the Kai, the Kai, then it's not going to work out for you. Either if they're timing it correctly, it's a block string, so that if you try to input your DP, you're just going to come out of block, and you're going to get hit. And if they leave a gap, like I showed at the beginning of this, then you're going to get the DP to come out, but it's going to get hit. And if you try to do heavy punch DP like I just did here, it loses as well. However, as you can see here, if you try to super the Yun after the fact, then it's going to trade and Yun will be at advantage. The only way that you can deal with this as Ken as an example, and it's the only character that can deal with anything after the fact, is that you have to commit to EXDP after the fact, because it will beat the next decision that Yun does. And it'll technically combo. So it's rather risky to do anything else, but it is a choice that you do have. Other characters are not quite as lucky though. As Yun, the best way to deal with this stuff though is simply to make sure that your pressure is extremely tight. Right? 
Otherwise, you're going to put yourself in a situation where you can get DP'd or you can get supered or something. So when you're going for frame traps and stuff, you have to be very cognizant of the decisions that Ken can make. And this is why, you know, if you do something like this, it's a lot easier for Yun to go for something like this because... If you're far away and you're looking for Ken to DP, baiting this with, you know, doing this and then walking forward and blocking is completely viable. And that's also sort of like the way that you can deal with super, is that you can like tap forward and then block. And when you're in Ganajin and you do this, you end up staying closer to your opponent because you are recovery canceling. So then you're in perfect rest, uh, range to, you know, punish with close to any medium kick into palm or whatever it is that you want to do. But alternatively, you just have to keep doing pressure that makes it hard for your opponent to really commit to something like this. So just doing this is not a good idea against Ken. Or against characters that have very strong options as far as their invulnerability and also against characters like Hugo where if they get the parry on this that you're going for a ride. Same thing with Dudley. Using this against Dudley in these situations is just going to lead to you getting high parried into standing heavy kick into EX machine gun blow, your Ganagian's gone and then you know it's a risk. So for that stuff you have to do like uh, far fierce into crouching light kick as a way to cancel. Even though it's not a combo, you know, it keeps you from getting hit by the standing heavy kick. Otherwise, you should just be doing things that allow you to, you know, get back in relatively uh, efficiently. Because if you just do this, you know, it's not going to work. So you're going to have to use like Kara Crouching Medium Kick or um, Walk Forward Block, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, same thing with uh, doing Daipon Loop. Dudley can technically Red Parry it and kill you for it, um, but it is harder. But a majority of the cast can't really do a whole lot against normal pressure stuff. It's few and far between. The most common way that people are going to try to deal with this is they're going to block and then they're going to maybe try to jump away at a specific time. So when dealing with this, there's three major ways that you can deal with this. You have the ability to Zempo, you have the ability to universal overhead and combo, but this is heavily variable depending on player skill, their ability to react, and your ability to maximize things after you confirm. Uh, as every single character has slightly different hurt boxes, and it's a lot harder to get universal overhead combos on characters like Yurian, Dudley, Alex, like bigger body characters. Um, characters like Bakoto have weird funky hurt boxes as well that make it a little bit more difficult too. And then you have um, something that outside of Japan they don't really do all that much is the jump. Um, the concept is that when you are far enough away you want to be able to jump, right? And certain characters especially you're not going to be able to jump over them in the corner. Um, like Ibuki, Q, stuff like that. So when they're blocking your stuff and you are jumping at them, there's a lot of different options that you have. You know, you have the ability to go for target combo, so obviously your opponent's going to be standing up when you jump. They're going to try to deal with your decisions. So let's just make him uh, stand and then always guard. So when you jump at your opponent, 
there's all sorts of ways that you can sort of mix up what you're doing. You can um, do frame trap dive kicks, and you can also do dive kicks that will hit for combos. Both of these work. Um, you don't always have to, you know, jump forward towards your opponent either. You can neutral jump and space yourself out at certain different distances. But this is all like a mind game thing, and it all depends on how you want to deal with it. And the most common ways are super late jump medium punch, jump forward target combo, jump forward single hit of the target combo into either Zempo or confirm into a low short forward fierce. Um, you also have, you know, jump forward heavy kick, jump forward medium kick, all that stuff. And then um, you have whiff dive kicks, which depending on how much your opponent is paying attention, you may or may not be able to get a Zempo. Um, and it also depends on, you know, how early you do your dive kick and where you end up doing it from. So if you're doing dive pawn loop, and your recovery cancel and you go for the sweep, the jump forward light kick dive kick, you're going to end up right next to your opponent. But if you, you know, do it a little bit at the end of the, uh, recovery, the recovery time, and you do it as fast as possible when you're jumping, you're going to end up, you know, landing further away from your opponent. And you may or may not be in Zempo range, obviously. So, there's a lot of ways that you can vary things. Um, players like Mester do this a little bit more than others. Um, but you will see a lot of other top yuns do this. One of the most important things to note is the damage that you get when you're doing a Zempo combo. Because regardless of when you do your actual combo, you will get relatively close to the same damage. So the damage that I just got here is 41, and that's from an Issa Zempo. And this is 37, so it's a 4 damage difference where the one at the end gives you more meter than the one at the beginning. And this is relatively consistent against every character in the game. So when you're going for Zempo stuff, the rule of three applies. When Yun gets three Ganagens, he should win the round. And this is why Zempo is used a lot more often than not. Some players like to just try to confirm into more damage, just because the opponent has the threat in their head of Zempo. They don't want to get thrown. But there are a lot of players that just will block and take that Zempo because they're like, okay, I want to take as little risk as possible and just giving him the Zempo if he does it early enough is fine with me right and some players will even let you Zempo all the way up until the end they want to take no risks but them doing this is actually bad because regardless of when you get your Zempo you're going to get very similar damage and you're going to get very similar meter within 10% of one another in both, you know, aspects. So when you're going for all of your Zempo stuff, you get guaranteed Okazeme and you get set play in some in some situations. Or, you know, your opponent's cornered and then you can literally just run away and build your meter again depending on the situation. Whatever the decision that you are most comfortable with and what you think is called for given the game state. But this one thing here where people are just like, okay, you need to take the Zempo, if they're just going to hold down back, you still have the ability to use Universal Overhead to combo as well. So it's a screwed if you do, screwed if you don't situation. However, Universal Overhead against some characters, such as Hugo and Chun-Li, can be a bad decision. Same thing with forward medium kick. Um, if you get this blocked, Chun-Li can Kyra throw you back into the corner. If you get this blocked or this blocked by Hugo, you're going to go for a ride if they're playing SA1. So it's relatively risky to go for some of the overhead choices, which, you know, you can also just pressure your opponent and get damage as well. 
So if we go back to the state that I was in before, where we replay and there's no guard, every forward medium kick that you do does between 9 and 11 damage depending on how much health your opponent currently has. So, you know, if you land three of these into a Zempo, that's 40 damage or 30 damage into the, you know, 30 damage that you're going to get. But then you have to worry about other things. Because if Ken decides that he's going to do Crouching Medium Punch afterward, then you're kind of screwed because this is negative three. You're going to get hit by that down Medium Punch, and it's the same thing against other characters like Hugo or Dudley, where Dudley can press down Medium Punch, Hugo can press down Light Kick. It's very dependent on the character that you're playing against, how good the forward medium kick can be. And this forward medium kick can come off of all sorts of different you know, situations. Now as you can see here, if I do crouching medium kick, I'm doing light kick and medium kick. And the reason for this is because if I just try to do crouching medium kick forward medium kick, it doesn't work. You have to abuse the way that the game functions to add cancelable uh, state to a move. So you can do like a crouching medium kick a bunch of times in a row by just mashing crouching medium kick crouch like kick together. Same thing as crouching light punch crouching medium punch. So you know you can use this as well but it's not something that I suggest. Um, but you know you can go for pressure into forward medium kicks and Zempo stuff. That's the old school way to approach things, and it still does work. And players like Issei show that that works even at a high level to this day. 